This is the confessions of an ex Nuwabian. Now I'm gonna pick up where I left off in part 11. Derek, questionable. I always had my eye on him. You know, um, and I just knew that like he, he wasn't up to no good. He was from the Ansar days as well, but he, he just, his energy, he gave off a certain type of vibe that was like, yo, don't trust that. Don't trust him. So, you know, he would uh go to the bookstore and he would be in there certain days working, but I always uh, had the keys, you know, to open the door for him and then to lock the door. Now, I had a fallout with the sister, a set. One day, this was uh, class on Sunday. You know, we had class and everything, and she started talking about the black woman is God. Now, let me tell you something about this whole doctrine change and doc Dr. York saying that the black woman is God. This shit went to their heads. And it's just that plain and simple. So, you know, you couldn't tell these new Albion sisters nothing. You know, they were getting updates, you know, um, from Dr. York. Uh, she was personally getting uh, handwritten letters by him. And the doctrine changed and they basically were in control of shit. So one day, she starts popping that black woman guard shit, right? Um, during class. And I'm like, not all black women are God. You know, and I tried to explain to her that in the aspect of having children, then you can say that you create. I can understand you saying that you're God in that way. Because you... Ha, are, are, are growing a life, another life in your body. I get that. But the point that I was trying to make to her is not all women are God because of their actions, how they act. And she just was, she was just, we were going back and forth, back and forth, and it was getting nowhere. It was getting nowhere. She just didn't understand what I was trying to say. So after that day, she took my keys and she decided, cause she had, she, she always had a little snotty ass fucking attitude. So after that day, she decided that, you know, she was gonna be in control of the keys. So she started giving Derek the keys to open up the bookstore and to close it. And she gave um, Rick the, the keys too as well. So whoever, um, while previously, prior to that, I had the keys most of the time. But after that fallout, she would give the keys to whomever that she felt as though she that she felt as though that she wanted to open up the bookstore and close it. So I was cool with it, right? So days go by, days go by, whatever. You know, I'm seeing a gradual change in the doctrine again. They're coming out with the Patarak, the way, those books. And I'm sitting here like, what the f is going on? And then they, they got actual facts. And the, 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 the book, the front of the book is the back of the book. And the back of the book is the front of the book. It, it's, it's just, I just didn't understand it. I, I just didn't get it. You understand? Like, you know, um, also they had uh, the, the actual facts. Some of them were like stapled together. Um, some of them were like binders, like in plastic. And they just, they just had it like a... A, a, a plastic piece like the plastic clear um like folder like type of shit that you would get you know going to school and then it was a hard thick plastic that you would slide to hold the papers together it was just the books was just poorly done and they were still asking for an arm and a leg for them shits you know what i'm saying so um Everybody was going ape shit over the actual facts and the part tarak. And um, I just was like, man, I didn't know at the time. You know what I mean? I, I just didn't know. I was like, you know, maybe he writing that shit. Maybe he's not. 
but I'm trying to understand how the f is he writing anything if he's in jail. You know, but to my understanding later on, they, they, they said that what they would do is they would get all of his letters and they would put the, put the book together based off the combinations of all of the letters that he wrote. So that shit was going on. And then eventually, you know, I was going out and hustling, but I, you know, I was going from place to place to place to place. I found me a spot, this spot like further up on, on Betty's Fort. Um, next, right, right close to, I think North, what was it, North, North Lake Mall? Yeah, North Lake Mall. Um, it was a shopping area, it was a food lion, barbershop, your typical hood shit, you know what I'm saying? Food lion, barbershop, uh, dollar store, a KFC, and what else? I think it was a, yeah, it was a CVS and a Rite Aid. So, you know, I would go up there and I would sell oils, incense, my books, and I got up with this dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this dude CD, I call him CD. Now CD, you know, when I got up with him, you know, he was kind of like hesitant to talk to me and everything because he had to fill me out or whatever. So make the long story short, we, we started talking and every, everything and he was selling movies out there. And it was another dude that was selling movies out there. I'm gonna call him T. T and it was the short dude that T was with that was helping T sell the movies. And I didn't know that I had walked into some bullshit because CD had a problem with T because T would mouth, you know, mouth off and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I really didn't know who was up there first. And at the end of the day, it was like, can't we all just get along? Like I always had this, this thought process. You know what I'm saying? I always used to think this way, like Shell gas station, can be right beside Exxon. And nobody's shooting out, nobody's shooting, killing each other, none of that shit. They're making money. They're selling the same product, but they're making money. So I just didn't understand the shit. And um, I met, you know, I, I, I talked to T and I don't, I, you know, he was all right, you know what I'm saying? And the other, the, 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 the little dude, you know, that he, that T was with, that, that, that was helping him sell, the movies, cause T was selling movies too. Um, he never liked me and shit. So I hardly talked to him, right? So, you know, um, I'm out there, you know, I'm making a little bit of money. Cause of course I ain't making, but so much with oils and incense and, and um, my book, you know, um, T he's out there making money. T was set up, <coughs> excuse me. He used to set up at, um, right, right up at the barbershop. CD was was set up like in the parking lot, right? So there was a distance amongst one another. But then also T being a asshole, he's an instigator as well. You know what I'm saying? T used to walk past us and shit and just be mumbling. And 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 I understood why C didn't like. I understood why C wanted to put put his hands on him, right? So C had CD. Excuse me, CD had a car, and um, he used to drop me off, and we used to just chill, you know what I'm saying? Good guy, good guy. I mean, I, I knew he was a street dude, you know what I'm saying? But good guy, you don't f with him, he don't f with you. That plain and simple. So, this is going on while, you know, I'm at the bookstore, and like I said, she took my, I said, took my keys, the, the female that runs the bookstore, um, and now you got Rick and Derek that's, you know, basically having the keys when they are opening and closing the, you know, when they, when they're running the store. So one day I'm at Concord Mall, which is a couple of minutes away from Charlotte. I'm at Concord Mall. I'm in the inside. Yeah. I, I used to be a beast. I'm in the inside selling my books and shit. Right. And I get a call. And it's a set. So I'm sitting here like, what the f you calling me for? She will not have nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? So I pick up the phone. I'm like, yo, what's up? Oh, excuse me. Let me let me say it properly. Rahu Bat. <laughs> Rahu Bat, sister. She says, the bookstore got robbed. 
I'm like, at this time, I'm really not giving. But then I was like, man, shit, let, let, let me ask her what happened. I'm like, yo, what happened? She's like, I don't know. You know, Derek's not here and shit is stuff. Everything is gone. So I'm saying to myself, you know what? She's a female. She's in there by herself. Some shit may happen. So I said, yo, do you need me to come? She said, yes. I get down there. Rick is already there. I get down there and I'm looking around and whoever, at this time we don't know, whoever robbed the place, they took the cash register, the computer, some Afri African uh, uh, mask, what else? Uh, a fax machine and some, cause, which I never understood it. She had some bootleg, some knockoff perfume in there. It was like Doshi and Gabbana, some shit. They took that too. So the owner of the, like the whole, cause it was like a, a what would you call it? Um, I forgot what they call it, but, but there were more stores and all of the stores were connected. You know what I'm saying? So the owner of that whole property had video cameras so she calls up excuse me she calls the cops the cops come in and they wind up getting in contact with the owner of that whole property the owner says we got cameras inside the bookstore inside the hallway we could just run it back and see who did it so as they're burning because the owner has to burn the CD, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the, the, the video recordings, onto a DVD. As they're doing that, the cops is questioning us. They're, so, so they're saying, um, so uh, what do you do here? They're pointing at me. I'm like, well, you know, I work at the bookstore, you know. And he starts questioning me, like, how much do I get paid? And I'm like, I don't get paid. He's trying to figure out. How in the world? See, this is what I'm. This is what I'm saying. How in the world are you working for free? Like he said, even Walmart pays. Everybody pays people to work. And yo, I was just sitting there stunned. Like, yeah, but it's just, he just didn't understand it. And and at that time, I started waking up. Like, yeah, that shit is true. Like, it don't even make sense. I'm working for free. And I, so then he 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 said the cop. He was like, yo, let me tell y'all something. If y'all trying to do some insurance fraud, all of y'all are gonna get in trouble. All of y'all. Because that's what it sounds like to me. That you all are in on this big ass scam. He didn't say it, ass. But he was like, you all are in on it. This is some insurance fraud. Because you can't tell me that you are working here and you don't get paid. So we we sitting here and I'm trying to tell this dude, yo man, I'm 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 helping out, I'm helping her out or whatever have you. So they burn the damn DVD, they they, they burn the shit on the DVD. The same cop gets the the, the <laughs> this is funny, yo. The same cop gets the DVD. He puts it in his squad card. The computer and it you know in his computer right so we're sitting in the store he gets out he says um i need y'all to come with me we come with him and he plays the f tape this dvd and he says do you know this person and we all said that's Derek." <laughs> We saw him taking the shit out of the store, taking it out, and it was Derek. And then so, this has some like some real technology shit. Like she said, she gave him the name, and then he started matching with the pictures or whatever have you. And next thing you know, this had 
10 mug shots of Derek. And all of them was breaking and entering, robbery, all types of shit. Like they had, they had pictures with it. They had a ball head, dreads, braids. And they was like, yo, we know this. We've been trying to catch up with him for the longest. He is definitely a menace to society. And we was just stunned, like, you gotta be kidding me. I, I wasn't, they were, I wasn't. I was like, I knew it, I knew it all along. He had took everything out of the store. This is, this is the most funniest part. He took everything out of the store, <laughs> except for Dr. York's books. <laughs> Cause he knew he couldn't sell that shit. Who the fuck gonna buy these comic books? And it just bugged me out, man. And then after that, after the store got robbed, um, Derek got caught a couple weeks later. And word was, he told somebody to tell a set that he apologized. <laughs> that he was going through some um, hard times. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, let me take that back. His wife came to the bookstore and told, told a set that he said, Derek said, that he apologized and that he was going through some hard times and he'd been through a lot through his life. <laughs> but the robbed the motherfucking bookstore, yo. And after that, um, me and the set, we weren't the same. You know, um, she knew I didn't get too flying books. And I just decided to walk away from the bookstore. Period. And I started hustling more. Now, taking heed, I'm still a Nuwabian. I still have my books. Um, not so much of the Potterac and the actual facts, but the older books. You know, when we were at HTM, when I first got into uh, the um, nation or community or whatever the fuck you want to call it. So I still have my books. I still believe in the, the, uh, Dr. York being innocent. Um, but I felt as though, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. And, um, you know, me and CD, we was cool. We would go out to different barbershops, you know, and he had a car, so I was able to get around more, you know, and, and hit different places. So um, one day, uh, we rented a car, right? The, the mother of my children, we, we, we uh, rented a car. And um, we had to take care of something, you know. And um, CD had called me earlier that day, like in the morning time. He was like, yo, you going out to the spot? I was like, yeah. He was like, do you need me to come pick you up? I was like, nah, man, because, you know, we rented a car. So I'm going to be out there a little late because I got some, some things to do, but I'm going to be out there. He was like, all right, cool. So, um... He went out there before I did. And I went to go take care of the shit that I had to take care of. And um, I get my oils and my incense, my books and all of that stuff, put them in the car. And the mother of my children, she drops me off the spot. So I'm getting out of the car and I'm seeing like a whole bunch of papers and shit like blowing in the wind. And I'm looking over there like where Family Dollar is in the, in the barbershop and I'm seeing people like uh, looking down and the, j the energy just was not right the energy just was not right and I'm like damn what the f is going on over there and I'm, CD is not there and I'm like oh, what, what the f is going on so I go I walk up a little further and a guy is laid out and there's blood all over the fucking, uh, cement and his bullet holes in the family dollar glass. So I'm like, yeah, damn, what the fuck? I pick up the phone to call him and I'm like, yo man, CD, where you at? He was like, yo man, I gotta go. I'm like, what the fuck happened? He said, yo, I shot him. <laughs>